Welcome back to the channel shooters if you've been here before thank you for coming back if you've not been here thank you for showing up make sure you check out the description below and find ways that support you that also support me and what I do which is go to amazing places like this I know it looks like flatlands but that's the range out there and do some shooting that can do some teaching for you so you can get out and do some shooting that's the point anyways today we're gonna go over elevation change and what that means is last week I was in South Carolina shooting a competition before I moved here to Colorado where I am at over 4,800 feet and I was shooting that competition at 350 feet depending on where I was on that training facility. Now what that means is I still have my gun that was zeroed and the muzzle velocity was checked at 350 feet and I haven't done anything else to it since I got here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group it. I'm not going to re-zero it. I'm going to group it, see what it looks like, and then I'm going to make the elevation adjustment by changing latitude and all that kind of stuff to, on my Kestrel. And I'm going to shoot it at distance and see if it's accounted for and if it's still accurate without readjusting zero. Now, I'm pretty sure I know what's going to happen, but we're going to experiment and play with it. And you guys are going to get to see live what's going on. And we'll see how it goes. And we may have a special guest. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now, as I said, this has not been shot since the last stage of the competition. It was a video I put out last week. Um, so that's going from 350 foot elevation to a lot more now. I'll just double check, but it's over 4,800, right, Frank? Say oh, that again? What's the elevation here? Uh, yeah, elevation is 4,800 where you're standing, and then okay. DA is probably 7,000. Okay. So you got to do the DA. Right, yeah. Elevation is 4,500. The DA is probably 7,000. All right. And with that, all I'm going to do is check the grouping from the last zero, and I'm not going to change anything else. So let's see what we got here. Trigger cam on. Thank you, Frank. All right. And we are recording. Do a nice little five round group. All right. Looks like first one I was a little high, right, and then right, and then right. Which might explain some things from last week's comp. Okay, so real quick, I can't count. I did four shots instead of five, but first group, second group, third group, it's actually really not that much difference. Um, I was at 350 foot elevation, um, and this right trend might explain a few things from that match last week. So yeah, anyways, the effects of elevation on shooting. Again, I didn't change anything from on my gun from shooting last week in South Carolina to now here in Colorado. And I have the late and great, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Frank Galley from Sniper's Hide, if you haven't heard of, it, heard of it or him, check out his website. 
He's been doing this for how many years? Too many. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I went to school in 86. <laughs> I wasn't born yet. Yeah, there you uh, go. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he is going to lend his, uh, his knowledge real quick and explain this far better than I would because he has far more experience and wisdom in it. Um, elevation effects on ballistics, yep. especially changing. So one, why are we zero at 100 yards? Because it doesn't have enough distance for the atmosphere to work on the bullet. Atmosphere in your bullet takes distance, usually past 400 yards before you start to really see the effects of weather. So here we're standing at 4,500 feet above sea level. That's our current location. However, when you take the Kestrel and you run the density altitude, we're at 7,500 feet above sea level right now. So the bullet thinks it's at 7,500 feet above sea level, even though we're standing at 4,500 feet above sea level. When you're looking at a thousand yard shot, the difference between my dope on this range here would be 7.5 to 7.4 mils. If I go to Alaska or go to sea level, it's 8.5, 8.6 mils. It's a full mil difference at a thousand yards when we're looking at the weather difference between here and sea level. And the difference is parasitic drag, right? We have less molecules for that bullet to impact. So the bullet's gonna fly a little further, a little better at the higher altitudes. And altitude is a factor of barometric pressure with us. So we subtract a thousand feet of, bare, of altitude from the barometric pressure. Standard barometric pressure is 2992. Right now, today, we're 2540. So that's where the difference in altitude comes in. You wrap that into your barometric pressure. But 4,500 feet sea level right now, bullet thinks it's at 7,500 feet sea level. Once you get past about 400 yards, you're gonna start to see that come into play. Parasitic drag, I haven't heard that before. So that's just referencing really small molecules. Mo molecules hitting the bullet. Yeah. It's the resi air resistance. Yeah. It's what the air resistance is. So that's parasitic drag. Okay, cool. There All you right. go. So from here, you have you know your range better than I. Um, I would go to six. Six, just right to six? Yeah, go straight to All six. Right. Then let's do it. You got it. Sweet. All right. Dial 4.4, 600 yards. Let's see here. <sighs> recording, recording. All right, there we go. A little bit left, right. dropping wind it's right there in the shoulder all right so now i have 26 at 600 four mile an hour gun four mile an hour. so it's dropping between two to four um let's go 0.4 between 0.4 point three to even it up there it is right there all right so point Three, two, point five. Right. Oh, died down. Hold time. Ah. Yep. Uh, it's gusting between like three to three to five, three to six for me. good one to see it pop up right there all right but if you look a little side note for deviation this target at 600 yards is about with mirage is making it about 0.8 so i got 0.8 width on that target gives me a little slot to shoot into so far 
actually my rounds are flying a little higher. Now, I could not remember for the life of me while I was on the range this, but the competition that I shot recently for that 800, it was 800 yard targets, 857 yard, and 1,000. That 800 yard target was eight mils. The 857 was 9.2 and 1,000 was 13 flat. So I dialed out the eight mils and then held for the rest. The reason this is important is because eight mils at sea level, 350 feet, which, it, which is where I was, that's what it took to hit 800. Now, I'm dialing 7.2 to hit 800. So my round is much more efficient. So let's go check out the 800. All right, let's go. 800, 7.2. All right. One, two, one, three. Impact. Nice. There we go. All right, so what I am seeing is, especially per my Kestrel, my gun number, my speed drop, um, everything is flying more efficiently. Um, I was having a little trouble. So what I think happened in the last comp, not trying to make excuse. I don't think I had a great zero like I thought I would or thought I did, um, especially coming out here and then seeing I'm trending right, which my very last shot was directly in the center of my target for my last zero for the competition. But before that, they were trending right. So um, I think I should have uh, probably paid a little more attention on that. Um, but right now, what I am seeing is, especially at 800 and on that competition, this is what sells it for me is, I'm much more consistent after going through and making sure to set up with this than I was on that comp. That first round impact on that last, on that second to last stage, um, on the first target was 800 yards, hit 857, couldn't hit, and then finally did, and then a grand, um, and then dropped three. So coming out here with a wind call is about eight mile an hour, 1.3 hold um, at the uh, 800 yards, was hitting consistently. But that's after going through and setting everything right with the Kestrel and matching it up here. So uh, um, as by the numbers, I am flying, just like Frank said, more efficiently in the uh, with my ballistics. Now let's go ahead. I'm still dialed for 800 and Let's see here, wind, hold one. It's low. There it is. Seven, 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 five, six, five, six, right there. We'll go here. Impact. Impact. Now, if you're anything like me, you found those results to be awesome, and this video has been a lot of fun. Um, I definitely want to do more like this, so make sure you stay tuned. And I cannot wait to get up into the mountains to do some shooting, some high angle, low angle stuff in Canyon to Canyon. Now, if you are out in Colorado, my plan is to get monthly shoots set up. So if that's something that you wanna be a part of, make sure you send a DM to my Instagram, at underscore shooter, underscore Rugi underscore. I know, a lot of underscores. 
back in the day when I made that thing, that's what there was. Anyways, so make sure you go follow that and uh, stay tuned for more. There's videos every week. And yeah, that's what I got for you. So make sure you get out and bang. If you're still here, the uh, thing I have for you today is if you find yourself having uh, arguments or conversations in your own mind or, hey, maybe you're grumbling them out loud, and what that conversation actually is is you and the person you're arguing with um, and what you think they would say, a lot of times people are like, oh, that's what I do is to resolve an issue, blah, blah, blah. Well, you're actually not resolving an issue. What you're doing is you're not allowing that person, that real person, to resolve the issue with you you are instead having a relationship and a conversation with someone who's made up in your mind and a majority of the time that's a projection of your own shadow self what that means is that is the negative things that you think they would be saying all right unless you're like the most positive person in the world which most of us aren't so this is what i do and it's just a helpful tip maybe it'll work for you maybe it won't it works for me though uh, when I find myself in a situation where I'm just in that I'm grumbling mumbling and uh, arguing or discussing or debating with the person that you know I'm having this issue with or whatever I take that as a sign of a few things one that I've reached a point where I don't know what to do about it and I don't know um, what how I truly feel all I know is it's bothering me two is there's a lack of communication between me and that person that needs to be had. So I need to bring that conversation to them and I need to preface it, especially if I don't know exactly how I feel. I just know that something's wrong. I need to preface it with, hey, something's up. I don't know what it is, but this is frustrating, bothering, this is hurting, this is whatever. So um, make sure that you do that. And another thing is that you are at a point where it could either go really well or go really bad. It's just dependent on how you enter the conversation. And hopefully that person has the understanding that you're entering this with love and understanding that you yourself want this to have the best resolution possible. So that's what I got. Hopefully it helps. I know it helps me because that's like a, a dead point. Like, okay, this is where this is at. I need to put this down and I need to bring it up to them when I get the opportunity. So anyways, hope that helps. And as always, in life and on the range, get out and bang.